Yo, what's up? What's up? Let me make sure this is all set up properly. Make sure there's no funny business going on here. All right, sounding good, sounding good. What's up, what's up? All right, we good. Sure we good. We are live. I know it's been a minute. What's up with the chat? What's up with everybody? Thank you for rocking out with me. This is your boy Porter Rock seventy seven, your only friend in these YouTube streets, and I'm back um, to rock out with y'all so we could talk live. Um, I was thinking about doing a video, um, but there's a lot of topics. A lot of topics. Um, it's been a while since I posted something. I've been like at least two weeks. Haven't been on any podcasts. Haven't done any podcasts for myself. So I figured, let me do a live session. Also, a Q and A because there's maybe some topics that you guys may want to talk about. You want me to talk about, address, hear my opinions and stuff like that. So I thought this was the best venue to get everything. You know, I want to shout out everybody in the chat. You know, my man Shane, Jemiah, Free Flow, Darkling. You know, my man Deep, nineteen eighty five. You know what I'm saying? Danny Stab, Robin McLeod, Animal Station was good. Penguin, what's up? Roman Knight, um, Di Almighty Spartan was good. You know, Raf the Emperor, how's everybody doing? Lay, Jonas, Brian, what's up? Rich Cucumber Eater, <laughs> my man Lex was good. Kratos, what's up? And stuff like that. Um, what's good? What's popping? Um, how's everybody doing? Um, Frogs and stuff like that overdone You know what's popping and everybody. Thank you so much for rocking out with me uh, So we could do this live Q&A and stuff like that We got everybody if you don't mind hit the like button and also retweet this out or you know post it throughout your favorite uh, Forms of social media so we could get this popping. I'm doing the same as we speak uh, Send out all the links and we know we're gonna have a good time. We're gonna talk about stuff I know it's been a while since I left you without a dope beat to step two, step two. <laughs> oh man, but it's good. It's good to be back. Uh, just to let you know why I've been on a hiatus, why I haven't been pushing out so much content, it's because I've been having a very, very busy schedule. Um, it's been honestly ridiculous. Um, you know, my workload and stuff like that. I've been traveling. I just got back um, last week. I spent a little bit of time in Norway and in Spain. And then next week, I'm going to Italy um, for a little bit for about the week. So I'll be gone most of next week as well. Then I come back. And then about a week or two later, going back to America, North Carolina, to do some work. Then I come back to the States. And then I'll be here being like for three weeks in May. Um, and then I'm planning to do like a cruise, you know, summer cruise, a little vacation cruise with my wife. Uh, so, you know, in between, you know, just doing stuff for work and stuff. I wish I could go into more details of what I do, but I can't. Uh, but it is what it is. Um, but, you know, I'm going to hit up with whatever I can. Uh, when I can do something, I will. I need to do more videos on my phone. You know, I mean, I used to do that a lot. Uh, I think that's probably the only way I could keep up content and stuff like that. It's just hard to edit and stuff like that uh, and stuff, you know. Uh, I know I, I've cut the 60 Frames No Lag podcast. I know usually every Friday we used to have it, but I used to stay up, I think, till 2 no. I think it was, I used to start the podcast at 2 in the morning local time to accommodate, you know, many of the members uh, that were part of the podcast, you know, on their Fridays, but I just couldn't do it. It, it was getting rough, you know doing a podcast at two in the morning, it, it was getting rough. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out something else. I'm just trying to figure out stuff. The, the, the location and the timing is very inconvenient for what I started and stuff. And it is what it is. I'm trying the best I can. Um, but maybe when the workload and hours get down a little bit, I could go back to my original idea of, of doing like a radio, you know, type, you know, telephone type call in show where people call in. And I talk to them quickly on the phone, talk um, whatever topic, you know, kind of like the classic um, radio station shows we hear and stuff like that. Um, so, but when I have time, I'll start getting into that. But for now, we live, we're here. I see a lot of people uh, joining in and stuff like that. So again, if you hit the like button, uh, retweet it out so we could get the room popping and we could get this Q&A, we could get the discussions going. But to warm it up, uh, let me start out with some topics. Uh, let's start out with some topics that I could touch on. Some quick ones, some of them you know, been a while, but I just want to get it off my chest because I haven't really made a video about it. So we'll start off with 
Sekiro, you know, die twice with the whole easy button stuff like that. Uh, a lot of conversations came up about adding easy button accessibility, yada, 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 all this conversation. Many people on one end are like, oh, you need to get good. Other people are on the opposite end saying it needs to be more accessible. Other people are saying it's the developers' creative freedom and stuff like that. Here's my opinion on this whole thing, all right? I don't think it has anything to do with creative freedom or stuff like that, all right? And I don't believe in this whole thing, games need to be accessible. To me, gaming is accessible. It's just within gaming, every product is not going to be for everybody. That's just the reality. Not everybody is going to have the skills or the capability to play games. And what's funny is there's a video of a quadriplegic um, person, you know, gamer, who played the game and beat the game with a lot of, you know, issues. So, so even on that ground, there's no merit. But the whole point is gaming is a consumer product and not everyone's going to enjoy the same thing or have the capability to enjoy the same thing. You know, not everybody could drive a Mercedes. Not everybody could, you know, people with diabetes can't eat sugary products. I mean, there's a lot of things for everything. You know, not everybody's going to be able to have everything. But I will say this. From Software is known as that company that makes tough games. That is what they're known for. That is a selling point. Okay. And that's why I say there should be no easy button. Because let's be honest, if the game came with an easy mode from the start, no one other than the hardcore from software gamers would be talking about it. The majority of people talking about that game would not be talking about it if it had an easy button or, you know, easy button, um, easy mode. You know, it got to the point, this whole easy mode got to the point where even Corey Barlog, you know, you know, um, creator of God of War, he even started talking about it. That's how big the game got that the man who created 2018's Game of the Year was even in a conversation. That is huge marketing for the game. Many people that are talking about this game would not have this conversation. That is called marketing, all right? And that is why From Software is doing it, you know? They are carving out an identity for themselves. They are that company that makes tough games. That's who they are. That's who they want to be. And it's working. With every iteration of their games, there's more and more um, success for them. I think in this game, in, two, in 10 days, the game sold 2 million copies, which is amazing for them. They're never going to be that company who makes games that are attracted to casuals and sell 10 million, 20 million copies. They're never going to be that company. They will always be a company that sells two million, three million, four million type games. They will always be that company. All right. All right. But the fact that their identity is based off making hard games, that is what's selling them, you know, because the more people talk about Sekiro die twice, not having an easy mode, the more gamers are hearing about it. And their reaction is a lot of gamers reaction is what's this game people are talking about? Oh, there's this game called Sekiro. It's like, you know, people are asking for easy button because it's hard as hell and people having trouble beating it. A lot of people are like, what? It's really that hard? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to check it out. I'm going to see. I'm going to see for myself if this game is as hard as people are willing, are, are, are actually saying. That's the attraction, you know? That's what it is, you know? And people don't understand that. It's all a selling point. It's an identity point. It's not creative freedom or lack of thereof. Because if they did add an easy mode, it's not going to change the creativity behind the game. The game's creativeness is not going to change. It's still going to aesthetically look the same. The combat's going to be the same. It's just not going to be as challenging. All right? But from software's identity will change. Who they are and who they're trying to be will change. They can't be that company who makes hard games if their games can be played easily. They're going to stick with their guns. And it's working for them, and they find success. If some people don't like it because the game's too challenging, oh, well, don't play the game. There are plenty of other games to play. This is not a question of uh, accessibility, all right? There's plenty of other games that are in tune to the taste for other gamers. This is one particular product that's just not up your alley, and that's just how it is. So that's my, that's my thing about um, Sekiro Die Twice. It's a selling point from software has slowly become that company that makes challenging, difficult games. And when you buy their games, you better step up and get ready to play. All right? You, you know, you step up and get ready to play, or the game's not for you.
They're not going to cater to everybody. They're catering to people who wants to try to step up and take on their games. That's who they want to be. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. You know, I don't understand this generation of gamers trying to tell companies how they should sell their product to some way, you know, or the type of products they should be selling. I can understand consumers, you know, talking about the quality of the game or the lack of quality, you know, complaining about, hey, your game is broken, you know, this, that. I can't understand that because you're paying for a product. And if it's broken, then yes, complain. But if there's nothing wrong with the product, and the only thing you don't like it is because they didn't make it the way you wanted to make it. That's not how it works. If you don't like the way the consumer product is made, you just simply don't buy it. The company is offering you this product. You don't like it. Don't buy it. And then move on. Support the companies or buy the products. To me, that's a better phrase. Buy the products of the, of the companies that make it the way you want it. And that's it. It's an easy thing. But for some from software, they're that company that wants to make hard games. That's who they want to be. They don't want to be a company that gives people the options to play the games easily. They don't want that. This is the product they're selling. If you buy it, prepare to pay a challenging game. If you don't like it, then don't buy it. Don't even buy any from software, some from software games. Okay. And don't worry about oh, you know, more and more people. Could, would buy, be buying the games. I don't think that's the case. In fact, I would say they will have less sales, you know, because the hardcore, a lot of those sales from Secure Die Twice are from people who want to beat that game. Those guys probably won't buy it if there's an easy mode. That's just them. If they're not known, if this games or the games they make are not known as the games that are difficult to beat, then some people just won't be interested, you know? That's an appeal. That's a, that's a factor. That's a selling point to the game. You know, it is what it is, All right? So that's just one quick point um, about my whole view about Secure Die Twice. From Software wants to be that company. I don't see why they need to change. At the end of the day, it's a consumer product. All right. Uh, next thing I want to hit recently, Control Quantum Break. Let me see who else. I know some people appeared in the chat. So I want to give a shout out, yo, TJ Guyver, what's good? Oh, let me set this mic up properly. Uh, okay, Clarissa was good. Uh, who else showed up? You know, there's a couple of people. Pablo, Ice Queen Gaming, yo, I accepted your friend's request on um, PlayStation just to let you know. Yo, Lee, Dark Side Hawk, uh, Clarissa asked if I'm back in the states yet. No, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be living here in Germany for like another two years. Uh, I won't be back living in the states. Till 2021. Uh, yeah, my man said, my man, uh, Wonder, uh, Wounded Penguin says, I've been watching your back catalog. I'm really enjoying you talk nonsense. <laughs> oh, snap. Uh, and right here, wrap it up. What's up, Batman? How you doing? Harvey oh, Dent. Can he be trusted? You ever seen that thing on College Humor? Oh, that shit is hilarious. That Batman. Every episode, he keeps asking that same question, and I, and I just die when he asks that question. Harvey oh, Dent, can it be trusted? And it's like, what the hell? <laughs> Yo, you got to see, if you know what I'm talking about, type well, college humor, Batman, you'll see what I'm talking about. The dude is hilarious. That, 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 that mock-up of Batman is funny as hell. All right, but anyway, control. All right, this is how we're going to do it. All right, so control. So recently, if people don't know about this game, there's this game coming out from Remedy. Um, the makers of Alan Wake, Max Payne, and Quantum Break called Control. And it's a multi plat game of now available. It's available on multiple platforms, PlayStation, PC, Xbox One. But apparently, um, apparently, there's a lot of exclusive content for the PlayStation platform, right? And this got a lot of Xbox gamers riled up. Um, they felt betrayed, which is hilarious, a hilarious statement. But they feel betrayed because... You know, before Remedy used to make exclusives for Xbox, and now that they went um, multi-platform, they at least maybe feel that the exclusive content should have been with Xbox, not with PlayStation, at the very least, right? Given the past relationship. Here's the thing. Number one, this exclusive content is a relationship or decision between Sony and Remedy, and chances are Remedy may have approached Sony. 
This is just an assumption. Because I doubt Sony is going to jump on board. Oh my God, Remedy's making a game for us. You know, this is probably an approach between two companies, right? And the fact that Control was actually shown on the PlayStation E3 stage, that could have been the first sign to let you know there is some type of relationship between Remedy and PlayStation, okay? So it's a business decision. Number one, you have to look at it from Remedy's perspective. They're trying to appease the console with the biggest fan base. I mean, this is not this is not really an Xbox versus PlayStation thing. This is product that has a bigger market versus product with the smaller market. I don't care what you name the product. That's all it is. It's been like that in console gaming for generations. The console with the bigger market will get the benefit of exclusive deals, time exclusive deals, because that's the biggest market there versus the smaller market, you know? In order for the smaller markets to get exclusive deals and stuff like that, you know, um, and all that stuff, the smaller, the, con the, the, the maker of the console that has a smaller market, they have to be more aggressive. They have to put up more money. They have to show more initiative. They have to go out there and grab these deals, right? The maker of the console, the product with the bigger market, they don't really have to do anything because they're the big dogs. Everybody's going to come to them naturally. You understand? And then at that point, they just look at be like, ah, uh, we're cool with it. Now nah, we're not cool with it. You know, everything's going to come to them because they're the big dogs, right? The people with the smaller market, they have to fight. That You know what I'm saying? They're the underdog. They have to go out there and grab it, be more aggressive. So in a case like this, with control, chances are Microsoft didn't do anything. And Remedy went to Sony first, and Sony's like, yeah, cool, we'll do, we'll do something. And that's it, all right? That's number one. Number two, I'm going to have to be honest. A lot of people saying, well, the reason why this happened is because Xbox gamers didn't support Quantum Break. I'm going to be honest. I don't like that term. I don't like the term, you didn't support a game. In my opinion, these games are not something you support. It's a consumer product. It's not my job to make sure developer doesn't um, stay out of, you know, get out of business or the studio gets closed now. That's not my responsibility. My, it's not my responsibility to make sure a studio survives or the developers get a paycheck. You know, that's not my that's not my responsibility. You know, it's not my obligation to make sure they have a roof over their heads. That's not my job. You know, like, like my man TJ Gavin, he says, I didn't support Mac. Neither did I. It's not my job to make sure the developers of Sony who make Mac keep making games. No. It's a consumer product. It's their job to try to convince me to buy their shit. Because I'm sorry to say, I work for my money. You know what I'm saying? I'm not just going to give it to you just for the sake of you making games. If you make games I don't like, I'm not buying it. And if the majority of the people feel that way and your studio closed down, you know, in the same vein, people tell people with Secure Die Twice, get good. I tell those studios, get good with making games. Get good. It's not my responsibility to make sure your studio stays open. I'm not just going to give you my money. What is this? Uh, a charity? You're making a consumer product. You want your consumer product to be successful? It got to be good. It's not my responsibility. It's just, it's, that's just the reality. It's not my responsibility. This is what I'm talking about when Xbox game is, oh, this is a great game. Majority of the Xbox gamers didn't play Quantum Break because the fact is, it's not that good. All right? If that game was on PlayStation, it will probably sell a little bit better on PlayStation, but that's only because there's more gamers that own PlayStation and Xbox. But overall, that game's not going to do Horizon Zero Dawn numbers. It's not going to do God of War numbers. It's not going to be the big hit. It's not going to sell as much either. It's not that good of a game. Quantum Break is not that good. It's not that good. It's average at best. What do people expect from the game? So I can't blame... You know, as much as I like to talk shit about Xbox and fanboys, the reality is, it's really not that good of a game. It's, it's really, it's, that's all it is. 
So I can't say this is happening because Xbox didn't support it. What was there to support? It's not that good of a game. I played it. I'm like, this game is not that good. So I really can't blame Xbox gamers not interested in the game. It really isn't. That's just the truth. And to be honest, Control doesn't look that great either. It reminds me, yo, be honest, looking at Control, it kind of it kind of has this look of Gravity Rush, if you guys remember that game. But I don't know. It's like the Control, it just doesn't look interesting. So I'm not really interesting. Um, I'm not really interested in Control at all, you know? It's not. Now, some people say, why am I hate on QB? I just don't think they make good games anymore. I don't think they make good games since Max Payne. And some people say, oh, it's because it's on Xbox. That's why. Well, look, guess what? Controls are multi -plat. Now I think people are going to be honest. Now that they're making multi -plat games, more people are going to be honest about Remedy. Now that it's on PC, PlayStation, Xbox, there is no platform-specific thing. More people are going to be honest about Remedy games. Watch. All these people that love Quantum Break and Alan Wake, they're going to backtrack, and now they're going to be like, well, to be honest, that's all you're going to hear now. Now it's going to be, to be honest, to be honest, is reality. Like, for example, Alan Wake. I don't think that was a good game either. I mean, I was fighting possessed books with a flashlight and a gun. I want you to think about that. I was, you fight a, a possessed tractor trailer with a high-powered freaking flashlight. Like, Really? I'm not lying. I'm not making this up. Who played Alan Wake? You had books attacking you. I'm not bullshitting. This game is good. I was like, what the hell is going on with this game? It's insane. You know, and I play Quantum Break. It's like, my God. And what? And here's the problem with Quantum Break. You had these Many episodes that were like 30 minutes long. That is a terrible way to have a game where most of the story is in a TV show. That's not it. That's not it. All right. What if Control is a 90 rated game? I don't, I, from what I see, I don't think that's even possible. But either way, I just, I just don't see it. I just don't see it. I mean, personally, right? But anyway, I can't blame when it comes to any game. Main point, when it comes to any game, it is not a gamer's responsibility to buy a game just to simply support a studio. That's not how it works. It is no gamer's responsibility to support a studio with their money. Okay? The studio is making a consumer product. It is on the studio to make that consumer product appealing to the gamer. You do that, gamers will buy a game. If you don't do that, then they're not going to buy your game. That's it. End the story. If the studio closed down, oh, because gamers are supported. No, because the game sucked. There you go. That's how it is. Nothing more. They didn't make good games. They didn't make good games that people want to play. And therefore, you got to go. Bye. It is what it is, right? So that's my second point on that one. So now um, we got over 100 people watching. Just to let you know, hey, tomorrow I'm going to hit them up. But I'm supposedly, if everything goes good, um, at 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Um, Central European time, I will be debating Fritanga um, on his channel. Right. So stay tuned for that. That's supposed to be set up tomorrow. I'm going to hit them up today just to make sure that's all set. But it has something to do with the uh, Epic Game Store, you know, the, the whole Steam. We're going to see. We're going to flesh out because he hasn't been cleared on what exactly what the debate's going to be about tomorrow. But I'm going to tell you what I'm not going to debate. I'm not going to debate Epic versus Steam Store and which is better. I'm not doing that because I don't care about that topic. I really don't care if Steam is better than Epic or Epic is better than Steam or Windows Live is better than both. Or whatever the fuck. I really, you know, I don't really care if Origin's the best launcher on PC. I really don't care about which launcher is better. Okay. Me, I plan to get PC next gen as my secondary console to compensate for Xbox because I'm not really going to rock with Xbox next gen. 
you know, Microsoft is already going to put everything on PC. So it just makes more sense to me get a decent PC. I'm not going to get a high end because, again, I'm not going to get me a super powerful. I'm not getting me no 2080 Ti. I'm not doing none of that shit. Off. You know what I'm saying? I'm happy. I'll be, hell, I'll be happy with just 1440p capability. I don't really care about that, right? But the reason why I'm switching to PC is because I'll still get the Xbox games, Microsoft games, whatever, whatever you want to call it now, age, plus whatever exclusive PC has, which is very with, with its various launchers, Steam exclusives, Origin exclusives, whatever, you know? So it's a game having decision. That's all it is. I'm going to get me a decent price PC. I'm not going to get me a super build just enough so I could play the games and play the exclusive that I can't get on PlayStation 4. I mean, or soon to be PlayStation 5. That's it. That's all it is for me. Okay. At that point, I'm not going to care which launcher has which. Yes, I recognize some launchers are better than others, but at the end, it's the platform I'm getting. All right. That's all it is. All right. Uh, and that's all I really give it to, give a cam about, you know? And man, random guy, rock dude is going to try and paint you as a PlayStation stand. Well, we'll see what he does. All right. But ultimately, I'm not going to debate Epic versus Steam because I don't care about that. And that's never a point I made. I don't really care about which launcher is which. Don't really care. All the launchers, I don't care. To me, it's about the platform. Get the PC platform. You have access to the games. That's it. That's all I care about. That's my perspective. But that's just to let you guys know, tomorrow, 3 p.m. Eastern, that's also 12 p.m. Pacific if you're out in the West Coast of America. And if you're local in Europe, um, that would be 9 p.m. Uh, Central European time. Okay? All right? And that's it. You can't debate Epic versus Steam because it's a now. There's no reason to. I mean, here's the thing. Is Steam better than Epic? Yeah. I mean, is that really a debate when you're looking at something... One store versus the other store? No shit. Steam is better than Epic. They have more shit. They've been out longer. It's more fleshed out. And, you know, that's like, you know, taking, you know, that's like, I don't know why. To be honest, that's not even a debate. One store is better than the other. That's why I, I don't care about debating the stores. What I'm saying is I don't really care which store is better, you know. That, that hasn't been really my comment, but I don't want to go too deep into that. We'll save it for... Um, you know, the debate tomorrow, but so right now it's set for 3 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. European time. So if you want to check it out, um, it will be on his channel, okay? Um, and we'll talk about that then, all right? So, what else? Uh, Jedi Fallen Order is just happened right now. Um, uh, a trailer just released. Uh, I enjoyed the trailer, got me kind of excited. But there's a couple of things that we recently learned. Number one, it's going to be a single player experience. All right. Um, everybody's saying, what channel? Uh, the channel is called Fritanga. Um, don't worry, I'll make sure it's on my Twitter. You know, once it starts live, I'll push it out on my Twitter. So pay attention to my Twitter channel. So I will push it out on Twitter. All right. Um, if you haven't followed me on Twitter, please do so. But I will push it out. Okay. But it's supposed to be a single player experience, um, no multiplayer. All right. Yeah, everybody's like EA. Nope, EA dumped them. Okay, so uh, that's what they're going right now. They said there's no gameplay. Um, they'll probably really reveal more. Remember, the game's supposed to launch in November, so this is like the teaser trailer. I would imagine by no by E3 June. Um, um, uh, by E3 June, we'll probably see actual gameplay. Probably, probably, are they going to be at E3? No, they're not going to be at E3, are they? Who knows? Maybe they'll see it on Microsoft stage. We're going to see gameplay and stuff like that. Right, but um, somebody on Twitter uh, posted, "Was this the game Amy, Hen uh, Amy Henning um, was doing?" Um, um, my man Jay Main, Jay Main from the Press Dark podcast, he made a good comment. Was this the game Amy Henning got fired or she left, which was once known as Star Wars thirteen thirteen? Right. Uh, Simply Deep says, do questions have to be gaming tech related? I don't want to bring up anything out of respect for your channel. You know what? We're going to do a free-for-all. Just for the sake, I know it's been a while. Free-for-all, Kione. Just don't do no weird shit. Like, you know, do I look at lolly shit? I, you know what I'm saying? Just, if it's a free-for-all, but don't, you know, <laughs> it's a free-for-all. So if it's not necessarily gaming, that's cool, okay? 
you know it could be about movies upcoming whatever just ask your questions all right and i'll try to keep up with the chat all right uh and i'll try my best to uh, keep a lookout on what you guys are asking okay um if you need to ask it multiple times please do so because again i'm trying to keep up whatever all right um my man shane i guess he's doubt uh no doubt man i hope you could check out the debate and stuff like that all right um anyway so the thing about Jedi Fallen Order, what I like, is a single-player driven story. And I'm going to tell you, while Battlefront is good for the... Because a lot of people love the whole Battlefront universe, fighting, you know, rebels versus Imperials, all that stuff, right? Cool. But every generation, we always had a story-driven Star Wars because we like the progression of that individual character being developed and making it through the ranks. You know what I mean? You know, Star Wars and story-driven material go hand in hand. And we so far haven't had that this gen, but now we're finally getting it. All right? So I hope, you know, I hope this game delivers. Now, I hope EA is turning over a new leaf. It's clear single-player games can be successful. Horizon Zero Dawn was recently announced, sold 10 million. Spider-Man sold 10 million. God of War said 10 million. Witcher sold incredible. There's a lot of single player games that have done phenomenal if you put in the effort and you will be successful. You know? It doesn't have to just be multiplayer games. You know what I'm saying? There's plenty of room for everything to thrive. Okay? Because when you think about it, not everybody's playing Apex or Fortnite. Sure, there's shit tons of people playing it. But the majority of each platform are not playing that. The majority of people are not playing any game of whatever you pick, you know, because everybody within a platform has a certain taste. You know, there are millions upon millions of gamers that want these single player experiences. They love it. I would say gaming was built on that. And there's people who still love it, you know. So hopefully EA makes a great game. Don't try to do no funny shit. You know what I'm saying? And if it deliver a great game, I think it's going to be successful. As much as people, a lot of people don't like EA, which is warranted. I'm not saying it's not warranted. It's warranted. But if you see the game and they show gameplay and people are like, you know what? Okay. That game does look good. You know what I'm saying? It does look great. It doesn't have the BS policies EA pushes with microtransactions and pay to win and none of that stuff. It's an honest to goodness, great single player game. If it is that game and they do deliver a great single player experience, quality single player experience without the BS, right? And people recognize it. That is the perfect message to show EA with purchasing the game. And if, if you want to play it, then play it, you know, because that sends a message to EA, you know, their last two games have been duds, you know, Battlefront's been dud, Anthem, dud, and then all of a sudden a single player game that's quality and done the right way is massively successful. EA will get the message. We need to bring back the quality in these games. You know what I'm saying? They'll get that message once they see the disparity in what we are willing to play, you know. Um, gotta ask, what's your opinion on movies that show men in embarrassing situations caused by either a practical joke or a sleazy mind game by some chick that will get you laughed at. Can you can you give me an example of a movie deep? Um, what's your opinion on movies that show men in embarrassing situations caused by either a practical joke or a sleazy mind game by some chick that will get you laughed at? Is this like an actual movie in a theater or you're talking about like a YouTube prank? Um, I, I'm not sure about the question and where you're getting at. If you can give me an example of a movie, that way I could, you know, post, you know, Updated with a movie and I'll get back to that question, right? Or whatever. I got to see what you're talking about. Um, the question is a little bit too vague. Clarissa, do you have tickets for Avengers Endgame? No, I do not. By the time I tried to pre-order, it was already sold out. So I most likely will be watching Avengers Endgame like a week after stuff like that. It's crazy. That shit's that's bananas, you know, and I'm dying to see it. Um, let's see. Going down. Uh... Uh, we got a super chat face 23 BK and Y was good. Thank you for the super chat. What up rock? What are the chances of PS5 launching in March 2020? Especially since the PS5 sock is done and ready for mass production. I will say this the one Nintendo. I will say this So I'll go back Japanese companies back in the days 
used to launch their consoles early in the year, right? And the reason why it was the practice is because they know not a lot of games are launched, only a few games, a couple of third-party games and stuff like that, right? Also, the production. You know, at the start of a gen, when you first launch a console, the manufacturers, you know, the factories, there's only so many consoles that can be produced, right? So you launch it early in the year, and throughout that year, you know, from you launch it, let's say March, you know, throughout March, April, May, June, the production line gets better, more consoles get produced, and by the time the first holiday season comes out, which let's say would be November that year, you can provide the biggest period of console where consoles get sold the most, which is November, December. November, December is the biggest period of where majority of the consoles get sold, right? You have the manufacturing process pushing out the output to meet that demand, right? Also on top of that, because you started in March, you gave more time for other games to be released. So that way, by the time November and December comes out, which again is the biggest periods of console um, for console sales, there are more choices of games available as compared to the launch. Because you know, because you have an extra, because it's like eight months, you know, later, you know, eight nine months later. So within those eight nine months later, you know, because not every company, um, sure, the game will come out within the first year. They're just not ready as a day one launch. So some games come out three months after launch, six months after launch, even up to nine months after launch, you know, even a year after launch, you know. So these games are still launch window. They're just not specifically day one launch, you know. They can't meet that day one launch, so they release it three months later. So by the, so in terms of PlayStation 5, there's a good chance PlayStation 5 will be 2020 because it will give the PlayStation 5 the same thing that happened in Nintendo Switch time to develop in terms of factory output and by the time november comes around playstation 5 will have more games available as compared to when it got launched in march so there is a possibility and i think that's what sony's trying to do sony's trying to push it trying to get that console out march 2020 let it build up for a big holiday vice launching it holiday november and there's less titles does that make sense so there is a possibility you know i can't tell you it's going to happen but it makes sense that that's what Sony's trying to do, you know, and we'll find out more later in the year because if they are going for a March 2020 event, then they're going to do a PlayStation reveal this year. Maybe not around E3, but I will say September, October, November, that time window, there has to be a reveal. If there's no PlayStation 5 reveal by the end of December, then PlayStation 5 is not going to launch in March 2020. They need to get the hype going. They need to show the world what the console is, the specs, and they need to show the games a couple of months before launch. So if we see a PlayStation 5 revealed this year, they're, they're most likely going for that on um, uh, 2020. But great question. Thank you for shouting out. Um, okay, so let me go down. Uh, let's see. Ugh, everybody, boy, this chat is lit. Let me see any other questions. Just trying to. All right, the trailer. I know some people didn't like the trailer. Why CGI? It's a way to show a game. It's a, remember, it's a teaser. It's a quick teaser. Um, it would be nice if they would have said in-game footage, because that's what I love about Naughty Dog and even Santa Monica. They don't do CGI no more. Every time they show a game, even if it's just the story trailer part, it's in-game footage. It's showing the capability of the platform and what they're doing. So I think that's amazing. Um, so let's see. Uh, let's see what we're doing. Uh, it is in-game engine. I see GI people need to learn the difference. Hopefully it is in-game engine. Because it did look good, but I didn't. I don't remember seeing anything that said... Um, Okay, so simply D, here are the examples of movies, Porky's and any American Pie movie. Okay, so what do I think about those movies? I have no issues about those movies because those movies are just comedy, um, and they've been around for decades. Um, you're always, you know, those type of movies, and I see where maybe you're going with, those movies aren't meant to tell people how men act. You know, that's not really the design, or at least I never took it that way. Those movies are just an exaggeration of the silliness that 
you know some people go through it's an exaggeration it's kind of like you know art imitates life and stuff like that you know nerdy like porkies is a bunch of nerdy teens trying to get some titties and doing pranks and stuff like that it's an extreme exaggeration stuff like that you know you know like you know what dude really humps a, a pie you know it's just weird stuff and i think it's just harmless comedic and stuff like that i will say this i will never take a movie or comedy or any i don't care what product it is in terms of movies and entertainment and use that to define people you know what i'm saying because at the end of the day it is a product that's trying to sell tickets or you know get people to watch it or whatever so I don't really, I take movies for what it is. It's a movie and stuff like that, you know? To me, and this may not be where you're getting at, but to me, the stuff that is truly defining, well, I'm not going to say truly defining. The stuff that I see that's giving people a bad image, in this case, men, since this is the particular topic you're talking about, is the stuff we see on social media. That is what's screwing over the image of a man. You know, for example, I don't know if you people seen it, but recently, and I even mentioned it, um, you see this man, right, in New York who was kicking a 70-year-old lady. Maybe she was homeless, whatever, but she was on a train, and he's attacking her. And then the, the, the dude got arrested, you know, but, you know, after he attacked her, you know, there's two guys, maybe they were teenagers, young adults, whatever, they were recording it, and they were laughing, you know, and, and, and to them, it was a, an amazing a, a show, right? And then the dude, after he beat up the old lady, was like, yeah, put that on World Star, motherfucker, or whatever he said, right? And the dudes are laughing like, oh, oh, oh. That, to me, is ruining the image of a man. Because I swear to God, if I was on that train, the moment he talked shit and lifted up his foot, you would have saw me just run on top of the dude and just beat the shit out. Number one, listen, if you're the type of dude that likes to hit people, that's a green light. Because you're going to be known as a hero. The moment that dude attacked that lady, you just got the green light to beat the shit out of dude and the world will love you for it. That's one of the few times you could beat the shit out of somebody and you will be rewarded. The world will have your back. Think about it. He just gave you the green light to get his head cracked and you will not get in trouble for it. You could crack the dude's head and the world will love you. The dude gave you an open door to get his ass whooped. Those two dudes that were recording it, they could have jumped them and stomped them out. And the world will love those two dudes for it. No one's going to claim those two dudes are dogs. They would be like, hell yeah. They would be heroes. But instead, they chose peasantry and bitched out and just laughed at a defenseless lady. That's the shit that's killing the identity, man. It isn't Hollywood. It isn't SJW. It isn't the left. or It ain't none of them. It's dude's lack of action. You know what I'm saying? That allows this shit to happen. It's one man picking on defensive people. What kind of man will pick on an old lady like that? That's number one. And number two, what kind of man will allow for people to be picked on them? You understand what I'm saying? That's what's killing the identity of men. Right? It ain't Hollywood. It isn't the view or the talk or all these shows. It isn't feminazis. It's none of them. Men, males are doing it to themselves. We pick on defensive people and we stand by and not do shit. We disrespect our women. We leave pregnant women and won't raise our kids we're doing this to ourselves and in hollywood we're not making grown men decisions and that's the shit that i see that annoys me that's what's killing our image it ain't trust me a show on netflix called queer eye for the straight guy or some weird shit like that that's not what's killing the definition of men it isn't the stupid political agenda of bathrooms it's none of that It's our own personal decisions. We're talking, you know, a lot of guys are talking a good game, but when it comes to step up, none of them are walking the talk. You understand what I'm saying? That's just a reality. We're standing by allowing 
nonsense to happen. You know? Now, I'm not trying to make this topic of men versus women. I'm just addressing specifically the question that Simply had. You know? And I think maybe if if, I, if I'm off the beaten track, Simply, I apologize. I was just, you know, the way you're bringing it up, I'm just wondering if you're concerned about... And correct me if I'm wrong, Simply, you know, tag me if I'm going left with this. If I'm not nowhere near... Um, what you're talking about, all right? Um, but based on just those two things, your first question, then you mentioned Porky's, whatever. I'm just wondering if if you're trying to get to media making men look stupid. And in my opinion, all you got to do is go to Facebook or Instagram and you'll see real men. Well, I'm going to say real males. You know, real males making bad decisions. You know, that's just the reality, okay? Now, again, I'm not trying to make this a women, a man versus women. I'm just specifically talking about men, okay? All right? That's all. That's all I'm talking about. Just strictly the conversation point to question. I'm not trying to do, because are there fucked up women out there? Of course, there's messed up women. But I'm just sticking to the men also because that's what I can relate to. You know, I can relate, you know, I'm a man. So I'm a spec to do man things. My dad raised me to do grown men things. You know, I don't attack weaker people. I don't talk shit. I don't assault people. I don't disrespect women. I don't go in a, uh, in a club, you know, and a woman with a fat ass pass by and I just grab it as if it was mine. I don't do that shit. Okay. That's just me, okay? That's just my point. And shout out to Dark Side Hawk. I agree. One man's actions are not in, uh, in, uh, an indictment of men as a group. I don't like the idea because there are men who piece of shit doesn't mean men as a group. And I agree. All right? I agree um, to the point where one man doesn't represent everything. But what those men do, lack of action, it gives... The idea of what a man's supposed to be. How can I put it? It kills the idea of what men are supposed to be. You understand what I'm saying? We should be better than that. Okay? You know, I love grabbing ass too, but it's my wife and she gives me permission to. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not gonna be doing no random ass grabbing, disrespecting females. You know, that's just how it is. You know. But that's just me. So I don't think it's Hollywood doing anything. We have to, men have to watch themselves more than it is Hollywood and agendas and all this stuff. That's what I see. And that's just it. All right. Uh, that's just the bottom line. Um, what are the questions we got? Uh, we live in an era of participation gaming. Nobody wants to work for anything anymore. People want instant gratification. There's no reason for a game to hold your hand. If you're talking about Skiro Die Twice, I agree. Um, and here's a good, you know, in terms of that game, it, it's it's satisfying to beat a game that you had to put in some type of work, some type of effort, you know? PR, you getting days gone day one? Um, yeah, um, already got it pre-ordered. So, yep, so I'm going to be playing it. You know, at first I wasn't too keen on it. I know I was excited for a new IP, but I needed more details, but I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. So hopefully with Days Gone, um, I'm interested. So I'm going to play it, you know, what I'm hoping. And I know a lot of people talk to me about it. I'm just, I'm just hoping I don't get Red Dead Redemption 2 again. You understand what I'm saying? I hope there's a decent amount of fast travel points that you can easily use to access different areas. I hope there's not excessive motorcycle driving just for the sake of motorcycle driving. I hope the game is challenging. I hope the game has good controls. Um, you know, if you do, if you have to do a lot of side quests or if there's a lot of activities, I hope they're purposeful, purposeful, like there's a point to it, you know, and it'll be a good game for me. And that's how I see it. All right. And we scrolling down. So that's it. Um, so what else we could talk about? El Matador, Gorilla will make a new Soulcom. You will see. <laughs> yeah, 
You know what though? Um, so recently, uh, article came out talking about rumors gorillas making a new multiplayer game, and of course they put the picture of you know of Killzone, whatever, because that's what they're known for. So a lot of people assume it's a new Killzone. People got to understand the picture doesn't necessarily mean it matches the words. All they said was supposedly they're making a new a multiplayer game. Doesn't necessarily mean it's Gorilla. I I mean doesn't necessarily mean it's Killzone. I hope it's not Killzone. I hope it's not Killzone. I hope it's a new IP. Or I hope they took over SOCOM, you know. But they did hire developers who, some developers who were part of the project that did Rainbow Six Vegas. And Rainbow Six Vegas is a very popular multiplayer game, and a lot of people love it. A lot of people said it's great, and they love the game, right? So it's good they got that talent. So it's safe to say Gorilla is making a new multiplayer game, because if not, why would you hire specific talent, right? That's particularly multiplayer focused. I hope it's a new multiplayer game and not Killzone for the following reason. One, Killzone ran its course. The game is going to be what it is no matter what's done. I don't even think a reboot will even help that game. The game is what it is. The game was never a huge, big multiplayer franchise. It's, it's decent. You know, I enjoy Killzone 2, actually, more than any other. Killzone Shadowfall, I thought it was dog shit. But it is what it is. I think since Gorilla. You know, with them being very popular and moving up the ranks with Horizon Zero Dawn, I think they need to leave Killzone behind. I think Killzone is done. They need to move on. I know there's a few of you Killzone fans, but I think if we want to see Gorilla continue with its success, get bigger, grow larger, be able to create more new IPs, I think they need to create a new big multiplayer IP, new big game, you know, single player, multiplayer, just start from scratch, new creative idea, and possibly create a bigger franchise. So that way they can have at least two big franchises, Horizon Zero Dawn and this new game. I don't think Killzone will ever be a big franchise or at least equivalent to what Horizon Zero Dawn was established. You know what I mean? Let, you know, Gorilla now is on a roll. I think Killzone will hold them back. That's just my opinion. I think Killzone will hold them back. I think I think it's going backwards now. You know what I mean? Um, let's see another question. Uh, P Rock, what do you want out of next gen? Games, dog. I want games. I want them games. That's it. Now nah, I'm just lying. Majority of it is games. That's number one. I want just games. Okay. What I truly would want out of next gen is actually not even for myself or for gamers. It's more for the developers. All right. Now, hear me out. What I truly want to see for next gen is developers focusing on their tool sets that they can easily make great games with less initial issues. And hopefully, because of the tool sets, and the programs and the capabilities of all these engines, it doesn't take them as long to make games. You know what I'm saying? They can easily build games faster with less issues and better quality. That way, when they launch the games, you don't need a day one 35 gig patch, day one, because the game was already broken. You know, I want them to refine this current gen of gaming, refine it for the next gen. Of course. Spruce up, better graphics, better physics, all that stuff, you know. I'm sure next gen is going to focus more on 4K, but focus on the frame rates. Let's get 60 frames. Let's get less games that require day one patch. Let's get these servers up. Because to this day, we still get games that launch online only, like Anthem, and they still fuck up with the servers. Let's focus on the infrastructure. Let's focus on the engines. Let's be able to release more quality games day one and less games that require patch after patch after patch. Let's release games where the servers launch great with not that many issues. Sure, you're always going to have some level of issues, but some of these issues are like game breaking. Like some issues you couldn't even play the game. Like one Anthem. They were actually breaking consoles. Like, how are you going to release a game in two now, 2019 
and it could potentially break a console. Like, stop. So what I want out of next gen is the developers and publishers putting in the effort to fix and improve their infrastructure. Build your infrastructure, you know, because I firmly believe if you push shit in, then you're going to get shit out in terms of the product. So build your studios, build the products, build your engines, build your infrastructure that you can provide day one better launch quality games. Vice releasing the game, but don't worry, we'll fix it later. Because to be honest, a lot of those games, we lose interest. Like if it's broken, it's like, whoa, whatever, bro. Like I really don't want to play this. Like why do I want to play this game when there are other games that are quality that work? So that's that's my thing, you know. That's what I like to see. You know, improve the infrastructure, improve the tools, come out with quality games, All right? Uh, let's see what we got here. Scrolling down, uh, scrolling down, scrolling down. Clarissa going ham, going ham up in here. You're getting World War Z. I have to. I haven't really been paying attention to about World War Z. I have. I be honest. I haven't seen much of it. I'm just gonna sit back. I'll just. I'll just wait. Um, not just wait, but. I'll give my opinion as I look more for that game. But I'll be honest, I haven't really been looking at that game. Um, to tell you the truth, I've been trying to tackle my backlog, and I now I'm playing Yakuza, Yakuza uh, Kiwami. And yo, I'm going to be honest, I feel ashamed that it took so long to play this game. I'm, I'm honestly embarrassed to myself that I haven't played this game sooner. It's fun. It's great. It's the essence of gaming. I absolutely love it. And this game is going to make me buy all of them. I think there's six parts, right? There's, they're up to Yakuza 6. So I will tell you, I am absolutely ashamed in myself that I had this game in my backlog and it took me so long to play it. I'm loving this game. I'm I didn't think I would love it. I'm actually loving this game. So that's what I'm doing right now. And because of that, I'm putting more focus about that. What about a reboot? Kills on franchise, man. Screw a reboot. Let's start with a new game. Let's start a new game. In fact, I'll say this. I'll be fair. Make a new franchise. Focus on that new multiplayer franchise. If it's big, then do one, two, three, right? You know, do a sequel, maybe a trilogy, whatever. You know, so you got Horizon Zero Dawn 2, new franchise. Horizon Zero Dawn 3, new franchise. Then... Maybe not even during the PS5 ever. PlayStation 6, brand new reboot Killzone from the ground up. Why? Because number one, you went a whole generation without Killzone. So that will completely wipe the slate clean. Killzone will be out of our minds completely. With PlayStation 6, a complete reboot of Killzone will give it a fresh start. And people will be like, damn, it's been like almost eight years. What are they doing? What are they going to bring to the table? It is starting brand new, new storyline, new everything. It's almost like a completely new game. Do it like that. But I would say give Gorilla the opportunity to make a new... Give him the opportunity to make a new IP. And let's see if, if Horizon Zero Dawn is either their capability of them making great games or if it was just a one-time lucky deal. Let's see what they can do with a fresh new IP. And it could be multiplayer, single player, multiplayer. Hell, it could be multiplayer online only, like Anthem or Division, whatever. But let's see them tackle another new project and really see what Gorilla can do. Uh, PR, what studio would you like Sony to purchase? Be realistic. Realistic. I'll, if they had the capability, I would like them to pull Bioware out of EA if EA was willing to give that one developer up. I think Bioware is really a single-player studio. I think EA is forcing them to do something that they're not really capable. I ain't going to say capable, but they're not really... How can I put it? They're a better single-player studio than they are multiplayer studio, right? And I think Sony, if they were to grab Bioware, they will allow them to be at their best. And Sony will support that. Sony will probably tell them, don't even bother you know, throwing in a multiplayer component. You know, don't throw nothing for us. You know, do what you do best. And Sony could do that. So I could see that, you know, realistically, I would like Sony to acquire from software. I think that will be a great relationship 
you know, Sony would be able to augment them with Japan Studios. I think that would be a great relationship to have from software. They make great games. I think they have a great relationship with Sony. I think Sony will still allow them to do what they do. And now with the backing of Sony, they'll be able to truly support them, even though I think they do great on their own. But I would really like to see that. Um, who else? I think Sony would be a good fit for Sony. It's going to be a smaller studio. Um Hmm. Who would I like to see Sony purchase? As Fawn Software will be good if they could purchase Bioware. Um, I don't know. Because there's not a lot of small studios out there that I could think of off the top of my head right now. Um, um I will say, even though I think they're doing fine. Platinum Games, you know, again, Platinum Games having 100% creative freedom because they're great, but backed by PlayStation money, Sony money, I think that would be a great studio, you know, but that's just some of my points and stuff. Uh, why do Sony need to purchase studios? I'll say this. I don't think Sony needs to purchase studios. I'll answer that question. I don't think they need to, but I think here's the thing with Sony, the position and there and everybody has this dilemma everyone's gonna have this dilemma there's always gonna be periods of of sparse there's always gonna be periods of you don't have big exclusive and that's because you don't have enough studios to fulfill an annual requirement okay right now sony doesn't really have an exclusive rpg studio uh, uh, you know gorilla obviously they have horizon zero dawn but imagine like right now we don't have a Bloodborne 2, okay? I think if we would have had from software, we would have had a Bloodborne 2 by now. You understand what I'm saying? Um, and that's it. I'm not saying Sony has to buy 10, 20 studios, but I think maybe a few more would balance out annual to annual requirement. Again, you don't have to release 10 games a year, but I think every year, even from the start of the gen, Right, and I know the start of the gen is the hardest because there's not a lot of console sales. So, first party studios, well, other than Nintendo, because I think Nintendo did a great job with this, but some first party studios are cautious about releasing big games the first year because there's not enough audience. But I think Nintendo proved you could release a game at launch and it's still going to be financially successful. Because look at Zelda; Zelda kept selling all throughout the year. So I think it is. I think it is possible if you make a game good enough, big enough, you can launch it day one and boom. You know, I think it's possible. My man Ruham, thank you so much for the super chat. He's showing my support. I appreciate you always out there um, supporting the channel. Um, El Matador, I'm worried about Ghost of Tsushima. What you worried about? Um, is it possibly not launching this year? I think it's gonna be a good game. But I think we're all at the point of where we're asking ourselves, when are these games going to launch? You know, because they're they're amazing looking games. We just want to play them. And I don't think that's a, a bad problem to have. I think that's a good problem because I'd rather be in a situation where I'm, I'm, I'm salivating at the mouth, just waiting to know when these games are coming out than to be in a position of when when are games ever going to be announced on my platform, you know? So it's a good problem to have. It just gets a little old. So I could see, I could see whatever. Uh, I could see where everybody gets with that. Okay. Uh, I'm going down the list. I'm trying to keep up with everybody. I appreciate it. Um, and there's another topic I want to talk about. Uh, definitely want to talk about. Uh, so uh, let's see what we're going on. We talked about that. Um, Let's see, let's see. Oh, watch it. Skipped, skipped. Uh, Yakuza Kiwami is amazing, fam. My man, Goto Beast Bro. Thank you for the super chat. It is. Yakuza is absolutely amazing, and I'm loving it. It's gonna be, I'm gonna end up buying all of them. I'm gonna end up buying all of them. You know, it's it's fucking it's, the game is phenomenal. I just love it, you know. Uh so I'm gonna drop that, okay? Uh Let's see what else. I'm going to talk to you guys about something else. Uh, let's see. Blue Point Games. That's a good one. Yeah, buying Blue Point Games. 
You know what I like about Blue Point? I like here's the thing. I know some people with the remasters or remix, whatever, but they did a good job of remaking games. I would get Blue Point to remake some games that are that have been dormant on PlayStation for a long time. Like I would like Blue Point to remake Legend of Dragoon. I honestly believe if that game was remade, it would be a big hit this gen or the next gen. I think a lot of people that don't know about the game, if they could probably remake it, it has a great concept. And I think I think Legend of Dragoon was one of those games that were made and developed decades too early. I think it's one of those games. I think that game will do much better now in this era. Than it did when it came on the PlayStation One. I think that game will be highly successful. Obviously, dragons. Everybody loves dragons now. The gameplay was amazing. You know, they just the story was great. It needs to be fully remade from the ground up. And I am telling you, I think Legend of Dragoon will be highly successful. You know, so I would love Blue Point to tackle that game. You know, I think this is the age. I'm. Mean, if you notice, a lot of RPGs are doing great in terms of sales. It's great. It's a great generation of RPGs. A lot of people are playing them. You know, The Witcher, Dragon Age, just, you know, obviously Fallout, Elder Scrolls, RPGs have been doing phenomenal, right? And I think this is the time to release that game. I think it will be uh, amazing. Um, yeah, about that. What the fuck? MS having free to play behind the damn paywall? I'm not even going to talk about that. That's just, it's just insane nonsense. But guess what? Whatever. So, we even talk about this Xbox sad. Have anybody released, uh, saw um, the supposed price of $250, 229 euro, 229 euro um, in America will be equivalent um, of $250? Like, What's the point? That doesn't make sense. Can somebody explain that to me? Um, what if Blue Point making Play for Filter? That's a good one. That's actually a good one. A complete remake of Siphon Filter. That's good. But back to Xbox Sad, you know, the, the edition with no disk drive. At 250 some places people already posted Amazon links where you could get a regular Xbox One S for cheaper. And it has a disk drive. I don't understand Microsoft's logic in this Xbox app. Like, can somebody explain this to me? It's $250. Like, why? I don't I don't get that. You know. Got a hundred people watching. Hit the like button and again um retweet it out. Uh so we could get this conversation going. I truly appreciate it. Thank you so much for the support. But back to Xbox. What is Microsoft thinking? You know. I don't I don't understand that. Let me let me retweet this out real quick. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh here we go. But the council people already showed that you could get an Xbox One S with the disk drive for cheaper. All right. And I know some people are going to come up and say, well, it's an option. That's not an option. That option does not make sense. All right. Number one, you can still do all digital on the Xbox One S if you choose to. It's not like the, the, the disc one is going to be a better device for all digital compared to the One S. It's the same thing. It's the same item. Okay. So that's number one. All right. Number two, you actually lose features. For more money. Like if you could cop an Xbox One S with the disk drive, we're gonna we're gonna say the one S versus the SAT, right? The Xbox One S, you could get it for under 250 bucks, and you have the capability to watch 4K movies, right? Which is not really a gaming thing, right? But at least you could do it, right? But here's the most important part: because it has a disk drive built in, you can play your Xbox 360 games, right? Because backwards compatibility is a big deal, right? So your Xbox 360 disc games that you want to play, you can play it on the One S. You can't play it on the Sand. It has no disc drive. So all those 360 and Xbox games that are backwards compatible, 
Sorry, you just lost the ability for backwards compatibility. You're, you can't insert a disc to play him. So you lose backwards compatibility for all your disc-based content. You lose the capability for 4K movies. And it's more expensive. I don't get this. The console needs to be $100 cheaper. The console needs to be a buck fifty, with, at a minimum, two terabytes of space. Right? That, to me, would make sense. Also, one more thing, it should not be the Xbox One S hardware design. Why is it so big? It should be much smaller. Like a tiny device, you know? I'm not saying it needs to be, you know, an Amazon stick, but something much smaller, a lot smaller and thinner. You know? There's no disk drive in there. So why is it so big? It's more expensive than the 1S you can get. You can't play 360 games backwards compatible. You can't watch 4K movies. It's the same goddamn size. What is the point of this? How is this an option? Again, your 1S, you can go all digital. Nothing says on your 1S you have to play disc-based games. That's an option. You buy the 1S, you can choose to go all digital, or you can play disc games, or you could do both. Whatever, whatever is your style. I just don't understand it. All right. Okay. That's just me. So this sad day, they truly screwed up. They screwed the pooch with that one. Okay. Um, rumors. That's a good one. Thanks for bringing up that point. Do I believe Halo is a five hundred million dollar production game? Meaning. They are investing a half a billion dollars into Halo. Not marketing, just pure development. Yes, if the game is going to be on every platform imaginable to include PlayStation, Nintendo, everywhere, because that is the only way they're going to make their money back. It has to be, and I'm just not talking about through Game Pass or any you know weird stuff or whatever, it has to be available on every single possible device possible because that is a lot of money a lot of money to put in a game all right even rockstar didn't spend i think two five hundred million dollars without advertising i mean they spent it with advertising but you know with advertising it's always like that but 500 half a billion dollars on just pure development even rockstar didn't do that and their game sells huge if you're going to put that amount of money you have to put the game everywhere. You just have to. It got to be on Steam. It's got to be on Epic Store, um, Windows Store, Origin. It's got to be on Nintendo Switch. It's got to be on PlayStation. It's got to be on Xbox. It's got to be everywhere. It's got to be on your mama's sewing machine if they could get it on there. That is a lot of money to spend on a game. You know what I'm saying? And to make back a half a billion dollars, let alone profit, which means you got to go above a half a billion, that's a lot. That is insane. That is insane amount of money for that game. You know? So if they are putting that much money, I'm telling you, Halo Infinite is going to be everywhere. It's going to be everywhere. Okay? If it's not going to be everywhere, then no, they're not going to put that much money. Not behind that. There's just no way. That's just insane. Okay? You know? All right? Now, somebody brought a point. Rockstar still living off of GTA 5 Online. I will tell you, GTA 5 Online is not the standard. That game, I don't know how they did it, but that game literally survived two generations. It started out last gen on the PS3 360, and that shit still sells in the top 20 to this day. To this day. That's insane. That game just... I think it sold almost 100 million copies. That's insane. I, I don't know how that game did it, but a lot of people love it, right? Um, Penguin, I'm scrolling through. He says, what do you think about the low adoption rate of Japanese games on Xbox One? For example, in the UK, physical Kingdom Hearts 3 sold 82% on PS4, 80% on Xbox One. I think because Xbox this gen didn't convince 
gamers who love Japanese games that they're gonna get that type of environment on Xbox. Xbox didn't send that message. Sure, every year you hear a tweet, Phil Spencer going to Japan, Phil Spencer going to Japan, but we don't see really anything from it. You know? So if you're a gamer whose part of your taste is to play games for Japan, Xbox did not sell to you. Microsoft did not sell that console to those gamers. You know, PlayStation did, Sony did, even Nintendo. Obviously, the Japanese company, for the most part, I mean, not for the most part, but the reality. So if you're a gamer and you love Japanese games, why would you get an Xbox if they're not advertising that part of their environment? They're not advertising their ecosystem will heavily have Japanese content. They never really push that narrative. So you, so those gamers are not going to buy it, you know? And UK, they love Japanese games. You know, look at Bullet Hell Honey. She's on Twitter, you know? Um, look at um, um, Iron Wolf, you know? They love Japanese games. UK, you look at their, you know, UK sales, they're very open to the taste they have. They love, you know, Japanese games. Xbox hasn't really sent that message. This Microsoft really hasn't sent that message. So... If you haven't sent the message, you're not going to get the consumer that's interested in that. And that's just the end result. You know, it's again, it's on Microsoft to try to convince gamers that, hey, Xbox is going to be a great place to play Japanese games and not just talking about it with a tweet. Oh, I flew to Japan. That doesn't mean anything. Let's see the content. You know, let's see Microsoft go after some exclusive Japanese content, you know, big ones, you know. So I would say that's that's exactly what happened. Um. They say Phil went to Sony headquarters to play Days Gone. Uh, that's pretty funny. Okay. There's one thing I want to touch on real, real quick. There's something I really want to touch on real quick. Okay. And this is this is a good one. All right. Um, as he says, how did he say? Uh, we're going to go to the kitchen, get the biggest knife on the drawer, and cut the bullshit. Okay. So all of you having seen... And I know we all seen it. We all seen now all of a sudden gamers don't like negativity in their podcast. All right. We all know where I'm coming for with this, one, right? Hit the like button. Start tweeting this out. Tweet the link to the YouTube. Because this conversation is going to get good. We're about to go in. All right. We're, we're, we're about to... We're about to go to the main event, all right? All right? We all know what I'm talking about, right? All right? I'm going to be in my bag now. Now, now I'm going to entertain, all right? What we've been doing over the what? The last hour, I guess, or whatever? You know, we were chit-chatting. That's what we were doing. We were chit-chatting. But I think now it's time for me to, uh, to get in my bag now. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to drink my drink. And we're going to go crazy right now. All right? So let people know Puerto Rock is about to talk about this whole recent... Oh, I unsubscribe from this channel because they keep talking about Xbox negative ways. You know, I hate the negativity. We're about to talk about that right now. We're about to go live right now. Now I'm about to go live. Now, now I'm about to get into character. And I know this is what you guys love. All right. So what I'm doing right now, right now, I'm giving you guys the time. To hit the like button, if you haven't done so already, we had 115 people watching, hit the like button, and I know Twitter, I mean YouTube done this trash to where you hit the like button, it does. It no longer automatically tweets it out, so you're going to have to copy and paste the link and actually post it on Twitter or Facebook, put it on your Facebook groups, gaming groups. And also on Twitter. Let's get this out there. Who are we talking about? We're talking about a couple of people. All right? We're talking about a couple of people. 
right? And I'm going to lay out the whole foundation, all right? About to get in my bag, go to the bathroom, bathroom break. I know some of y'all been holding y'all pee. Let it all out. Get yourself some drink. Get yourself some popcorn. Because we're about to get it in, all right? My man says, Puerto Rock, I love kills and series, kills on Shadowfall. To each their own, brother man. <laughs> if you enjoy it, you see something in that, then I do. All right? But this is what we're going to do. We're going to have a good time. But I'm going to call out some bullshit. It's, it's, it's time for the professor to show up. All right? And we're going to kick it. So hit that like button, tweet it out, let people know, hey, Puerto Rico's about to address some shit right now. He's about to go in. All right? And the topic is, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna step back, and I'm going to let you know, just in case, some of you are not up to par. So now, all of a sudden, more and more Xbox-centric podcasts, they see the light. They found Jesus now. Now they all found Jesus. Now they all realize, after they crucified him, that he's the son of God. Now, now they realize, oh, shit, we fucked up here. Now, now everybody's like, oh, shit, I think we fucked up. You know, they put the man on the cross. Then all of a sudden, the skies turn dark, the earth is shaking, and the church is cracked in half. Now they realize, oh, shit, I think we done fucked up here. Now everybody's like, now everybody's in a panic. Now that the generation's almost over, everybody's not wants to address the problem. The building burned down already. Now they want to call 911 and bring in the fire department. When the building's already fucking to ashes. They were literally in the kitchen. Everything's burning around them, sipping on coffee. He's like, nothing to see here. But now all of a sudden, it's an epiphany. Oh my God. Xbox hasn't announced a new AAA since 2015. Yes, they realized that now in 2019, in April. Now they realize this. Oh my God. Microsoft hasn't really been announcing stuff for Xbox One. Really, their announcements has been geared towards other platforms and other things. Gee, you figured it out, Sherlock Holmes. Congratulations. You, you guys do this now, right? Now everybody is seeing the light. And I don't get... What's funny is I've been saying this for the longest. For the longest. And it's been dismissed as fanboy council warning. This whole time. Fanboy council warning. But people say it now... And their profits. And I'm sitting back like, really? Y'all dismissed the shit I said and relegated to, ah, Porter Rock's just a Sony fanboy council warning. And dudes are saying the same shit now and their profits. And I'm like, this shit's wild, bro. You know? Shout out to my boy, Next Gen 720. He's been talking about this for a grip too, from his perspective, you know? And yes, he was out there talking shit about the PlayStation the first three years. He's talking his trash. The man has good character, the man in terms of entertainment. But at a certain point, he realized, wait a minute, this shit's sideways now. Microsoft hasn't done shit for the Xbox gamer, the actual Xbox console gamer, for a minute. So he's been voicing his parent. He got nothing but damage control. People would just... X, other Xbox dudes were like, oh, ZZ became a pony. He betrayed us. And he's just been telling people, yo, like, this shit's spooky. Right? Iron Wolf. Remember when Iron Wolf did the, the, the great LeBron? He took his talents to South Beach? He knew. He saw it too back then. He was a big Xbox dude. But Iron Wolf was like, yo. And he did his damage control. Remember, the whole four Titans? That was him. You know, Xbox Cloud, Cloud Gaming is more powerful than four Titans. That was him. 
But even he realized, hold up, bro. This is this is some spooky shit here. He noticed it like back in 2016. Like, wait a minute. Like, we about these games, and I'm not seeing shit from Xbox. They're not really announcing stuff. So he saw it too. But again, everybody thought he was just cloud chasing, become a PlayStation fanboy. You can't come home, Iron Wolf. You can't come home. Now all of a sudden, 2018, when this generation is pretty much a wrap, now it's oh my god. The building's on fire. No, bro. The, the building's not there no more. Like it's in ashes. It's too late. Don't at this point, you're just wasting water. It's it's done. Okay. What I find funny about this whole conversation now is oh, I'm tired of seeing these these podcasts all full of negativity. I unsubscribed. So now these podcasts are negative. Now, 2019, these podcasts are, are, are negative. Now they're negative. Now, 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 now we need to unsubscribe from these channels because they're negative. Let me tell you, let me clue you in on a little secret. Those channels, hell, even my channel, a lot of channels, always had negative view content. It ain't all, you know, roses and honey in gaming either. There's tons of negativity. It's always been there. What you don't like is not the fact that there's negativity. It's that there's negativity towards Xbox. That's what you don't like. Okay? Let's call a spade a spade. Let's, let's as Z says, let's get the biggest knife out of the drawer and cut the bullshit. It's the negativity towards Xbox you do not like. That's what you don't like. Okay? Let me ask, let me ask people this, right? For all those, and this is a question, and, and, and this is not necessarily for the chat because you guys probably don't fall in that category, but let's ask ourselves this. When a couple of years ago, when these podcasts were spreading bullshit that... When it, when it comes to PlayStation 4 AAA exclusives, we weren't going to get any because Sony closed down their PC studios. Did any of these dudes put these podcasts in check? Like, hey, why are you being so negative on PlayStation 4? And that, that's not even true. You know, closing down PC doesn't mean PlayStation is not going to get games. That has nothing to do with them. Did they go out and put the podcast in check? No. They reveled in that shit. They went out there on Twitter. You're not going to see no games. PlayStation 4 sucks. Sony killed the brand. They're only going to do indies and multi-plat deals. They're only going to have, whatchamacallit, um, marketing rights, because that's all they could afford. From Xbox Nation to Crossfire to DirectX minus the fraud, you name a whole bunch of Xbox podcasts. I mean, it's all across the spectrum. BGST. It was across the spectrum. That shit was all over. They were covering Sony getting rid of buildings on these gaming podcasts. Shit that has nothing to do with gaming. Sony getting rid of their PC division had nothing to do with gaming. They're just getting rid of a division that they weren't successful at, which was creating PCs and laptops. Nobody really cared about buying Sony Vio. No one really cared. What does that have to do with PlayStation? I don't know, but they were talking about it. And they somehow took about that. They somehow took a completed division that has nothing to do with PlayStation and they equated that to, oh, Sony can't make AAA games. You'll never see new AAA games. It's just going to be indies and marketing deals for multiplats. And if that's the case, why even buy a PlayStation? You can get those same multi-plats on Xbox, even though you don't see the commercials, but they're still there. That was that was the shit they were pushing. Right? Did anybody put these podcasts in check then? Did anybody be like, hey, yo, one, let's not make up lies. Two, let's not stop, you know, let's not get all negative about PlayStation. 
We'll see what they could do. You know, there's still chances of a new God of War. There's still a chance of Uncharted. You know, they have plenty of chances to release more games. So let's, let's stop the negativity. Did anybody do that back then? No. Nobody did that. All those negativity about PlayStation was not. You know? The term sparse. You know? A Sony executive was honest about the state of PlayStation. Which I which I could say less about Microsoft, to be honest. You know, because they damage control their stuff. But PlayStation, you know, and exec was honest, be like, hey, we're looking at our stuff. We're kind of sparse with our stuff. Meaning they recognize the problem, right? How did the Xbox community receive that? They didn't come and be like, well, at least Sony know they're screwing up. Maybe this is a good sign that they're gonna fix it. No, 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 no. They didn't come out like that. They came out, ha ha, sparse, PlayStation got no games. You got no games. That's what they did. That's what they did. They, this whole negativity stuff, that wasn't, that wasn't a thing. Nobody on the Xbox camp was trying to stop the negativity. They reveled in it. They reveled in it. Right? Because at the time, Xbox... Was pushing out exclusives because this was before Microsoft announced supporting PC, UWP, all games will be on PC day one. It was not that time. At that time, Xbox was a traditional model console where the games were made exclusively for the console. You can only play it on Xbox hardware. This was before the whole PC nonsense, right? So at the time, Xbox had exclusives. PlayStation, they didn't have the big AAA games. It was mostly multi platform marketing deals, indies. It was all that conversation. PlayStation wasn't pushing out enough AAA exclusives. They only had a few. Bloodborne here, Infamous there, Killzone, whatever. And then you had PlayStation fans that was hyping terrible shit. I mean, it's the honest truth. I mean, motherfuckers was hyping Godzilla and Octodad. I mean, it was pretty bad, right? Nobody was trying to curb check that. Nobody on Xbox camp was saying, oh, this, this is too negative. Gaming's becoming too negative. Let's just chill. All right? Nobody was saying, listen, let Sony fix themselves. They admitted they're screwing up. Let's see what they could bring out in the future. You know what I'm saying? So we can play these great games. Nobody was trying to do that at that time. There was none of this talk about that. All right? The people preaching that now... I challenge you, go to their channels. I'm not going to name names. But some of the names are being mentioned in this chat. But I'm not going to say it. I challenge you to go to their channel, click on video, and sort it out by oldest. Because usually the videos are defaulted to newest. Change it to oldest. See their original content. See the content they were re releasing in 2013, 2014, 2015. See those videos, right? Before Xbox, before Microsoft announced games on PC, when Xbox was making exclusives, see what they were preaching back then. And then see what they're preaching now. That's what I'm saying. You ain't gotta, you ain't gotta listen to me. Don't take my opinion. You, you ain't gotta, you ain't gotta do it. Just see for yourself. Go to their channels. Look at their old content. Look at the stuff from 2013 to 2015 and see what they were talking about. See how, check to see how they view the gaming industry then. That's all you gotta do. You don't have to believe me, man. Just hear it for yourself. Hear their content and how they view gaming during a time when Xbox had Xbox exclusives before the whole PC thing. And see their view on how exclusives are important. Just, just listen to them. That's it. That's all you gotta do. You ain't gotta do anything for me. You know. Everybody has negative opinion. Everybody has negative content. Everybody talks negatively about whatever. Okay. But to come out now and say you're tired of it when conveniently is being addressed to your specific favorite product. That's a problem because you're not being honest about your favorite product, you know, and at the end of the day, I think it's too late. Microsoft already set their path. Nobody was really honest about the product and the people that had the ears of, of, of Microsoft, they 
they really didn't tell him exactly what it was. So it is what it is. Can Xbox steal the crown from placing X? Hell no. Hell no. There's only two competitors. That's There's only two companies that's going to compete with the PlayStation 5. Nintendo and Sony. Sony will most more. The odds are Sony will do more harm for PlayStation 5 than Microsoft will ever do for PlayStation 5. At this point. Because at this point, I think it's safe to say Microsoft, they're on the path of just putting content everywhere. There is no focusing on selling a dedicated hardware and making that the priority. The priority is not the hardware. That's over with. So you might as well just get that out of your system. It ain't about Xbox One hardware. Hardware, Xbox, Xbox hardware is just part of the plan. It's just a part. It is not the plan itself. It's part of the plan now. You know, traditional dedicated consoles, where company focus on that, the console is the plan, and through the console, they get everything. The subscriptions, the services, the sales, all that. The game sells, software sells, all that. Microsoft, Xbox is just a device. If you choose not to play on the device, they're okay with that. They're okay with people not buying the next Xbox console. They said it themselves. They're okay with that. They're still making it for those that want that experience, but you don't have to get it if you don't want to. This is their words. I'm not making it up. Phil Spencer said that plenty of times. If you don't want to play on Xbox, that's okay. Play on the device you want to play on. He is cool with that. All right? So you cannot tell me that Xbox hardware is the focus, is the plan. It's not. Microsoft, Phil Spencer, literally telling you guys, told you guys, it's okay not to play on Xbox. The head of Xbox division, Microsoft gaming division, told you it's okay if you don't want to play on Xbox. They're giving you options to play elsewhere. So do not argue that Xbox hardware is the focus. Do not make points saying, oh, Microsoft will never do that because they want to sell hardware. No, they're not. They're not making hardware selling decisions. They already told you it's an option. If you want it, they're making it. If you don't, enjoy gaming wherever you are playing. So there is no Microsoft will not make this decision because they have Xbox hardware in the market. No, because if that was your concern, you would not tell or make open statements to the world. It's okay not to play on Xbox. It's about where you want to play. They would not be saying that stuff. So if they're telling you it's okay not to buy the console, then you're not really going to be a good competitor to a platform that is built and a company is trying to sell you. That's just how it is. So this negativity has always been there. But let's just be honest. It's not negativity in gaming. It's negativity towards Xbox. This is the one thing I give PlayStation, PC gamers, and even Nintendo gamers. They don't cry about, oh my God, I'm done. All I hear is negativity. They tend to... They tend to, how would you say... Um... Try to debate the bullshit. Like if you say some negative shit about Nintendo that's that's bullshit, they don't run and hide. Oh my God, it's negativity. They'll come and be like, no, that's not true. They'll come back and try to preach or debate or argue the true points with facts. PC gamers will do it. PlayStation gamers will do it. It's the Xbox dudes that will come up with bullshit. And if you counter, they don't want to hear it. They just, they just constantly avoid the conversation, which is fine. I'll say this. You don't have to listen to the people you don't want to. I mean, it is what it is. You can block, mute, whatever. You don't have to listen to, to people's opinion. I mean, you don't have to listen to anybody. You know. But what I don't understand is you don't want to listen to nobody, but you want to make sure everybody hears your false narratives or your bullshit narratives. I don't see how that works. You want to go out and preach some bullshit, but when people call you out or they bring facts, now you want to run and hide 
or you just don't want to discuss it, then why did you bring up the crap in the first place? And that's why I don't understand. If you want to preach, but you just you just want to preach and you don't want the conversation go one way in one direction. That's not how it works. You say some dumb stuff, people are gonna come at you. Especially if they have the facts and receipts to prove it to you. That's what they're gonna do. It make no sense. The Bay Frit people, we are tomorrow, 3 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. European time, Central European time, 12 p.m. Pacific on his channel. I'll post it and we'll give you an update on that. Oh. Um, but that's that's the thing I want to say. I'm seeing all this stuff about, oh, I'm tired of hearing negativity. Like, really? Like now? After six years? Kind of strange. And then I realized it's not really the negativity in gaming. It's the negativity towards a particular box. That's all it is. And the reality is you should have saw this coming. The, the facts was laid out. We all saw it. The majority of the gaming community saw the issues and it wasn't being addressed. It wasn't truly being addressed. And here's the thing. This, is, this goes to any console game, right? Right? It's just right now, particularly as Xbox, Microsoft has not really made Xbox console specific news announcement for the, for the gamer that bought an Xbox. PlayStation has. Nintendo has. Xbox, not so much. Anytime you hear a big new announcement, it's really an announcement for the general audience that plays their games, PC gamers and stuff like that. It's not really a thing. Like when, not, like when Microsoft announced, look, Xbox Inside, right? The show is literally called Xbox Inside, and they announced Master Chief Connection on Steam. That's not big news for an Xbox One gamer. That has nothing really to do for Xbox One. That's another group of gamers that got big news. Now, granted, I get it. Microsoft's trying to make more money. They're trying to appeal to another audience. Got it. Makes sense. I'm not going to knock Microsoft for that. But let's be honest. Master Chief Collection going to Steam is not Xbox One news. It's not news for the Xbox console gamer. It doesn't mean anything to them. Okay, doesn't mean anything. I think what's crazy, and correct me if I'm wrong, right? And I need the, I need you guys. I don't think they're putting the game on Windows Store, right? I need people to answer. Master Chief Collection is not going to be on the Windows Store, meaning. The only way to play it on PC is through Steam, right? Can people correct me on that? I just need some correction. That pretty much Master Chief Collection is only on Steam. It's not on the Windows Store. I think because I remember reading something like that on Twitter. Somebody mentioned that how the hell this game is not on the Windows Store and it's going to be on Steam. Not that saying that's a big thing, but I think I read that somewhere. And the reason why that actually stuck out at me and please correct me if I'm wrong yes you are correct sir so okay if a couple of more people could confirm that not saying that nayama you know it's on the window it's on the window store here's my question because i think the person was alluding to the fact that it's not actually a play anywhere title so i will say that really 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 is that is master chief collection a play anywhere title That's really, and what the person was alluding to is that an Xbox gamer who bought Master Chief Collection, right? Microsoft's been advertising to these Xbox gamers that their games that they bought on Xbox is, you know, is play anywhere, at least for first party. And Master Chief Collection doesn't fall under that category. So even at, so even something like that is a slap in the face to Xbox One gamers. So he says it's not playing anywhere. So it's not playing anywhere. So even Xbox rumors get a slap in the face with that. You see what I'm saying? And that's why a lot of like next gen 720, MM2K, the real Maslin, you know, a lot of Xbox gamers. That's the thing they were talking about. That's the thing gamers are talking about. 
that Microsoft hasn't really given Xbox news. And I know some people are telling me, wait till E3, Port Rock, wait till these studios. And here's my answer to that. I'm going to be honest. Whatever Microsoft announced, right, especially if it's for next gen, I don't need an Xbox. Microsoft is not going to announce anything that is exclusive to their console. That's already over with. So whatever they do announce, right? Like for now, if it comes out this year, then yes, I'm going to play on Xbox because I got an Xbox One. That's what I have in terms of my secondary console for this current generation of gaming. So I might have this console all the way up to maybe like, you know, next year because next year I'll probably get my PC or I'll probably wait till I move, but whatever. Next generation, it's not going to be an Xbox console. It's going to be PC. So the truth is, whatever Microsoft does announce, I'm just going to play it on PC. They're not going to announce anything that's making me going to say, oh, shit, this is what I'm talking about, Microsoft. I'll get your console. They're not going to announce anything that's going to make me buy another Xbox console. It's over. That's done. Does that mean for those of you who don't like PC... Don't buy an Xbox console. No, it's an option. Nothing says don't buy an Xbox console. You can, you know, it's a choice. You could buy on PC. You could buy an Xbox console to play these Microsoft games. You know, choose either or, you know, whichever one you want. No, it's not a wrong choice. The only reason why I'm choosing PC is because of the Steam PC exclusives from different launchers. So it doesn't make sense to buy an Xbox console to play Microsoft games. But then I miss out on PC exclusives when I could just get a PC and still have access to all these Microsoft games, plus even more games that wouldn't be available on consoles at all. So I'm looking at it for me from a gaming perspective, a platform that just has more games without actually losing games. Going PC, I'll have access to all the Microsoft games. So it just makes sense to go with that platform and get even more games. As compared to getting an Xbox console and less games. That's just me. Now, some of you may not be interested in any of the exclusive PC gets. And that's perfectly fine. If you're not interested in games, then at that point, it's it's about other things. You know? It is what it is. All right? So, really, anything Microsoft has E3, you know, if it's not over the next year and a half, it's gonna most likely going to be played on another platform. You know what I'm saying? What's good, LaMarcus? That's right. I'm your only friend in these YouTube streets. You know? And that's all it is. That's all I have to say. All right? Xbox Next Gen is an option. Is that bad? Is that good? Everybody's going to have their opinion. But I will say this. I grew up to where exclusives were part of the plan to compete. In fact, to me, that is the number one best way. That's the, that's the best competition I love to see. When each first-party developer was creating new IPs to try to beat out the other guy. You know, one of the best competition in war was Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo. That Sonic and Super Mario battle is legendary. Absolutely a legendary part of gaming history, you know, and I was glad I'm fortunate that I lived through that era to actually see Sonic and Mario just battle it out. And I'm not just talking about in games. They, it was merchandise. It was even cartoons. That battle between Sonic and Mario is legendary and possibly the largest battle of two exclusive IPs ever in gaming. I can't think of any game on any platform, anywhere, that had a bigger battle. Not even Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter was that fight as big. Not even those two. Nothing was bigger than Sonic and Mario. It took on a life of its own. Those two were literally the mascots and the face of, of, of two platforms. You know, it was Team Sonic, Team Mario. And they went beyond gaming, you know. They took it to, to merchandise, to toys, even to cart Saturday, you know, to cartoons. Sonic had his own cartoon, Mario, you know what I'm saying? It was legendary, the battle those two had. Absolutely legendary. 
The battle between Genesis and Super Nintendo was the battle of games, and it was exclusive, and it was huge. You had Team Super Nintendo, Team Genesis, and both teams made both teams had huge made a huge case of why one game was better than the other. Of course, Nintendo went with their big staple IPs, Super Metroid Prime, you know, um, Super Mario World, you know, Zelda, amazing games. You know, Sony came back with, you know, time to sort of baseball, Buster Luggers Boxing, Sonic, Fantasy Star, Shining Force. It was just games after games. Them people are just battling. This game is better than that game. We're doing this. We're doing that. It was just IPs all across the board. And granted, they were exclusive to their platform. So in order to enjoy more, you had to buy a Super Nintendo and a Genesis. But when you did that, when you bought a Genesis, when you bought a Super Nintendo, right? And however met that you did, whether it was your parents, you know, working jobs, you know, um, allowances, summer jobs, whatever, however way you were able to get these consoles, when you did get them, you had two platforms that provided amazing games simply because these two companies had to beat each other out with content altered beast golden axe strider exclusives on these platforms were amazing Fandle fantasy it just didn't stop and the gamers benefited from playing an amazing library across these two platforms. And even other platforms were on the rise. They tried to compete. TurboGrafx 16, there were some amazing games on that too. Played Bonk's Adventure. I played Splatterhouse. Magician Lord. Some amazing games on Tableau, you know. Obviously, they couldn't, um, NEC, who were the makers of TurboGrafx 16, they couldn't keep up with Nintendo and Sega Genesis, but at least they tried. And when they tried, there were some crazy great games. And that's where I grew up. To me, that was that's the best way these consoles products can compete. Oh, we're gonna make a game to beat out Zelda. You know? Like Sony. Sony's like, oh, we're gonna make a Halo killer kill zone. Obviously, it didn't turn out that way. Not by a long shot. But at least they tried. They tried to compete against Microsoft. You know, look at Ford, look at fucking Xbox and Microsoft. Why do you think Force is around? Because GT at the time was the biggest. Let me go back. I'm sorry, son, interrupt me. But GT, Gran Turismo at the time was the biggest racer out there. It was huge. It's still kind of huge. But back then, this game was like a 15 million selling game. Microsoft saw that. Microsoft saw, goddamn, that's a lot of sales for a racing game. We're going to compete with that. And now you got more to Forza Motorsport. You understand what I'm saying? These games are a great tool for competition. And sure, people are going to say, well, it benefits... The, the company, these exclusive. No, it also benefits the gamer because now you're playing an amazing game. Granted, you have to buy the console to do it, but that's that's nothing. You know, it's not like these consoles cost $10,000. You could wait until price drop. Wait two, three years, four years. Fuck, you could get a PlayStation now for $200. You wait for Black Friday during the holidays, they'll have it for $200, plus you get like a $50 rebate card or something. Console game is not that expensive. And you'll have access to amazing games when these companies want to release IPs to compete and say, hey, we are better at making games than that company. And that's what I would like to see. We are better than that company when it comes to making games. But right now, Microsoft's not going to be that company. They're not going to be that company that says we're better than that company. Who makes a console games? Hell, if anything, the game Microsoft might be on that console. Is that Microsoft coming? Hey, we make better games than Sony 
then the games are on PlayStation, they might put their games and be like, oh, shit, we made a game. Hey, we're going to put it on PlayStation. You'll see that more likely. It is what it is, you know. But anyway, I think at this point, I let it out of my chest. I hope you enjoyed this little segment, this little Q&A session. When we talked about gaming. Thank you for rocking out with me. Tomorrow, debate with Fratanga on his channel. If you haven't followed me on Twitter, you'll see the link in the description box. Follow me there. Of course, give me a like. If you're new to the channel, I hope you stick around and subscribe. I'm close to 5K. You know what I'm saying? I'm close to in 5,000 subscribers, and it's because of you guys. You have been amazing supporting my channel. Thank you so much. Never would I have thought I'd gotten this far when I first started, and I only had like three subscribers watching me. It's been an amazing journey, and the journey still continues. Of course, you know, my work is kind of conflicting with the amount of content I want to push out, but things will get back to normal, you know, as things goes on. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed your evening, your afternoon, where you're at. I'm about to get on this Yakuza, dog. I got to get on this Yakuza. You know what I'm saying? So you guys take care. This is your boy, Porter Rock 77 your only friend in these YouTube streets. And I'm out. Peace.